Greetings math champions. Welcome to Math with Janet. I'm Janet Moore. Today's topic is place value relationships. We are going to be doing an activity called building a million. This activity is designed to be introduced in fourth grade, but then is also designed to be repeated and extended in fifth grade, possibly in sixth grade and seventh grade, and then definitely in eighth grade as students begin to explore scientific notation. In this fourth grade version of the activity, we are going to be targeting standards 4.nbt.a.1 and 4.nbt.a.2. The math supplies that we will need are base 10 blocks mostly. We're going to need several small unit cubes. We're going to need several tens rods. We will need several hundreds flats and as many of these large thousands cubes as you can get your hands on. Those thousands cubes are pretty expensive, so if you want a cheaper option for getting multiples of those, I like to use these cardstock uh, four inch gift boxes that are four inch cubes. They're a lot cheaper option than the base 10 block version um, and you're going to need as many of them as you can get. Okay, math champions, it's time to get started. Let's play math. Prior to fourth grade, students have hopefully explored place value relationships using base 10 blocks. They should be familiar with the base 10 block pieces and some of the relationships amongst them. Generally, these small cubes represent one unit and students should be familiar with the idea that if they build up enough of those unit cubes, 10 unit cubes can be regrouped and turn them into a 10. Students should also be familiar from their work with addition and subtraction that if they get enough of those 10 rods, 10 of them in fact, they have enough to match up with the next larger base 10 block piece, our flat, which generally represents 100. Likewise, if we get enough of these hundreds, 10 hundreds can be regrouped for a thousands large cube. All of that should be familiar to students entering fourth grade. But then in fourth grade, there are a couple of ways that we want to extend that place value understanding. First of all, we want students to be able to think multiplicatively about the relationships amongst these place values. Up until now, they've been able to think additively. They think about it as I'm going to add on ones until I get enough to make a 10 and regroup them into a 10. Or I'm going to add on tens until I get enough to regroup them into a 100. But now in fourth grade, we want to be able to think multiplicatively. If I have one unit cube, and if I want to multiply it by 10, multiplying that unit cube by 10, it's going to turn it into 10 groups of itself. One unit cube turns into 10 unit cubes, which can then be regrouped into a tens rod. So taking a one and multiplying it by 10 turns it into a tens rod. If we have two unit cubes and we multiply them by 10, we want students to recognize that each unit cube is going to turn into a tens rod. So if we have a two in our ones place and we multiply it by 10, it takes each of those units and turns them into a tens rod instead of a unit. Those two ones just turned into two tens. Likewise, if we have a 10 and we multiply it by 10, it's going to turn into 10 tens. Those 10 tens then get regrouped into a hundreds flat. Taking this 10 and multiplying it by 10 turns it into a 100. And finally, starting out with a 100, if we multiply that by 10, it's going to turn into 10 groups of 100. And so taking a hundreds flat and multiplying it by 10 turns it into a thousands cube. 
And over time, we want students to realize that multiplying by 10 results in a place value shift. If I have three tens rods and I multiply them by 10, each one is going to turn into a hundreds flat. And so a three in the tens place multiplied by 10 is going to result in three hundreds, a three in the hundreds place. A multiplication by 10 ends up being a shift in place value. The other big fourth grade extension of place value understanding is that fourth graders go beyond the thousands place. Fourth graders are expected to explore place values from one to a thousand and beyond, and eventually up to a million. And we want their understanding of these place values beyond a thousand to be extensions of what they already know about the place value relationships from one up to a thousand. So before we extend beyond a thousand, we really want to spend a little extra time looking at the relationships in the place values from one up to a thousand. Because in this activity, we want to use that understanding to eventually ask the big question, how can we build a million? So we've already established that at any of these place values, multiplying by 10 will result in a shift from one place value to the next. That's going to be key as we try to extend beyond the thousands place values. We're going to use multiplication by 10 to move from one place value to the next larger place value. If we were to start at the thousands place, we should be able to multiply by 10 to get to the 10 thousands place. From the 10 thousands place, we should be able to multiply by 10 to get to the 100 thousands place. Finally, we should be able to multiply by 10 to get to the millions place. We have to work our way from the ones place all the way up through all of these other places in order to get to a million. And multiplying by 10 to shift from one place value to the next is going to be key. The other thing that's going to be key though is looking for other relationships, other patterns in these base 10 blocks that we've been working with. What we want to do is identify a pattern in these base 10 blocks so that we can extend that pattern to build the other place values that will get us to a million. Specifically, what do you notice about that base 10 block piece that represents the one and that base 10 block piece that represents the thousand? What do they have in common? And the answer is they are both cubes. To get from the one to the 1000, first, we took that one and we built it up as a tower to make that rod. Then we took that rod and built it across to make a wall for that flat. And then we took that wall and we built it back in order to form this larger cube that is a 1000. So these base 10 block pieces start as a cube, then grow up to a tower rod, then grow across to a wall flat, then grow to a depth that will make them a cube again. Once we get to the thousands place, it's like we're back where we started, just a larger version of what we started with. And making that observation is incredibly helpful because now we know that if we want to go from the thousands to the ten thousands, we already know that it's going to require a multiplication by 10. But that observation that we made about the ones place and the thousands place can help us visualize what that multiplication by 10 is going to result in. What is it going to look like? How could we build it? Since we're starting at a larger version of our initial starting point, we can just go through that process all over again. When we had a small cube and we multiplied it by 10, we stacked it up to form this tall tower rod. Now that we have a large cube, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to stack 10 of these large cubes to form one large rod. And that large rod is going to represent our 10 thousands place. But before we continue, I think we're going to need some more room. 
Now we've got some extra space. Notice we've got our ones place over here represented by that small unit cube. We've got our tens place here represented by the tens rod. We've got our hundreds place here represented by our hundreds flat and we've got our thousands place represented by our larger thousands cube and yet we've got room now to grow to our ten thousands place our hundreds thousands place our hundred thousands place and then eventually our millions place remember that each place value shift is a multiplication by 10. So to go from the ones place to the tens place, we multiply by 10. Then we multiply that by 10 to shift to the hundreds. Multiply that by 10 to shift to the thousands. The ones and the thousands are both cubes, just larger versions of that cube. So if we want to move from the thousands place to the ten thousands place, we're going to multiply by 10. And we're going to repeat the geometric pattern that we've seen already going from the ones to the thousands place. Since this thousands place is represented by a large cube, we're going to take that large cube, multiply it by 10. We're going to need 10 of those to represent our 10 thousands. And how can we arrange those 10 cubes? The same way that we arranged the 10 small cubes to go from the ones place to the tens place. We're going to stack them up and make a larger version of the rod. This is where it's helpful to have lots and lots of these thousands large cubes. But these are very expensive and they're a little bit hard to come by you. They don't give you very many in your base 10 block set. So what I've found is a replacement are four inch cube gift boxes. And I happen to have several of those so that we can let each of those represent a 1,000. And when we stack 10 of them up, they form a larger version of our rod that represents our 10,000s. Now, if we wanna use this 10,000 giant rod to build a hundred thousand, what are we going to do? The same thing that we've done with every place value shift so far. We're going to take that 10,000 giant rod and we're going to multiply it by 10. And the result will be our hundred thousand. Now, when we multiply it by 10, how are we going to arrange it? The same way that we arranged the pieces going from tens to hundreds. We had a tens rod and we arranged it into this hundreds flat when we multiplied it by 10. We took 10 of those tens rod, rods and we built a wall essentially of them in order to form this flat. We're going to do the same thing with this larger rod. We're going to multiply it by 10. We're going to need 10 of these we're going to use them to build a giant wall of these 10,000s rods. And that will represent our 100,000s. Let's see if we can build our 100,000 piece by taking 10 of these 10,000 rods and building a wall, a giant 100,000 flat section. <laughs> That is what a hundred thousand looks like. One hundred thousand of these little tiny unit cubes would fill up a wall that big. But we aren't done because our goal is to build a million. And in order to build a million, we have to take this 100,000 wall and we have to multiply it by 10. 
And when we multiply it by 10, we're going to arrange the pieces the same way that we did when we went from the hundreds flat to the thousands cube. We're going to take those 10 hundred thousand walls and stack them one in front of another until they form a giant one million cube. So it turns out a million is a pretty big number. When we multiplied a hundred thousand by 10 in order to create our million, when we took those hundred thousand flats and we stacked them one behind another to create a much larger cube, that is our millions cube. But it doesn't even fit on our screen, at least not with all of our other place values. So if this small unit cube from a regular base 10 block set is our one, then this giant cube over here is our one million. How do you build a million? One place value shift at a time. One multiplication by 10 at a time. So how might an activity like this help fourth grade students in their understanding of base 10 place value? Well, first of all, this activity reinforces the multiplicative relationships between those place values. But not only that, this helps students really visualize the meanings of numbers so that they can more easily do things like write numbers in expanded form. For example, if students are given the number 341,728, how can they think about writing that in expanded form? Well, they can examine each of these place values. The three in the hundred thousands place means that they need three of those hundred thousand giant flats. Plus that four in the ten thousands place means that they need four of those ten thousand giant rods. The one in the one thousands place means that they only need one of these 1,000 cubes. The seven in the hundreds place means that they need seven of the regular hundreds flats. The two in the tens place means that they need two of the regular old tens rods. And the eight in the ones place means that they need eight of these little unit cubes. Being able to visualize the numbers helps students understand the meanings of those numbers and helps them be able to work with the numbers more efficiently, more effectively, and more confidently. This has been Math with Janet. I'm Janet Moore. Thanks for playing math with me.